Hello friends, welcome back to Coastal Hub and myself, Dr. Jolisma. So today we are going to discuss the second session of our current topic, Articulators. So let us see the contents. So in our previous session, we have discussed the introduction, definition and history and evolution of articulators through the past year by discussing some of the important ones. And in this session, we shall be discussing the uses, advantages, limitations, basic as well as additional requirements and also the important classifications of the articulators. So before getting into detail, I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful. And if you are new to this channel, Prosto Hub, please do subscribe and support me. If you have any queries, any topic suggestions, feedbacks, do comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail ID. So let's begin. The purpose of an articulator is to hold the maxillary and mandibular cast in a predetermined fixed relationship. That is predetermined vertical height and centric relation. And the next purpose is to simulate the jaw movements like opening and closing and also to produce border movements that is extreme lateral and protrusive movement and intra border movements that is within the border movements of the teeth that is similar to those in the mouth. So we know that articulator is a mechanical instrument that represents the TMJ and the jaws which is used to simulate some or all of the mandibular movements. So primary purpose are three. One is to hold the cast, to open and close and to produce the border and intra-border diagnostic sliding motions. So in our previous session, we have already said that the main task of an articulator is to provide a frame where it is possible to relate in three planes of space, the maxillary cast with the mandibular cast in relation to the hinge axis of the patient and of the instrument. So this is the main task of an articulator that is to simulate the patient's jaw movements. Now let us see the other uses of articulator. Uses are diagnosis, treatment planning and patient presentation in both natural as well as artificial dentition. To plan the dental procedures based on the relationship between opposing natural and artificial teeth. To aid in the fabrication of dental respirations and lost dental parts to correct and modify completed restorations like occlusal corrections and finally teaching and studying of occlusion and mandibular movements. So these are the other uses of articulators. Now we know that mouth is the best articulator that is an understanding of the neurophysiology of mandibular movements and also the influence of several morphological and behavioral considerations led to the notion that each patient is his or her own best articulator. Now even though it is said that patient's mouth is the best articulator, mechanical articulators do have some advantages over patient's mouth for developing patient occlusion. So let us see what it is. First one, patient's saliva, tongue and cheek will not be of any problem while using an articulator. And the shifting danger basis and resiliency of the supporting tissues will make it extremely difficult to correct the complete danger occlusion. So after obtaining interocclusal records, complete danger occlusion can be refined outside the mouth on an articulator. And patient cooperation is not a factor when using an articulator once the appropriate interocclusal records are obtained from the patient and also there is better visualization of the mounted cast especially the lingual view of the teeth in the occlusion and also there is less chair side time while using an articulator so these are the advantages of articulators limitations of articulator first one an articulator may be made up of metal or plastic and these metal articulators can show errors in tooling that is manufacturing or errors resulting from metal fatigue and wear. Next, articulators only simulate the jaw movements. It cannot duplicate the jaw movements. And it is not possible to match even the fully adjustable articulators with the physiological functioning of human TMJ. They lack the resiliency as well as the proprioceptive reflexes and also the defense mechanism of the human TMJ. So articulators are just a mechanical substitute for temporomandibular joint. 
However, it can precisely copy the opening and closing movements in the terminal hinge position. So the movements simulated are just empty mouth sliding motions and not functional movements. And the final limitation is errors in jaw relation can be reproduced as errors in complete denture occlusion. So there is no provision to indicate or correct the errors of occlusion. So these are the disadvantages or limitations of articulators. Now let us see the basic requirements of an articulator. So the first minimal requirement is to hold the cast in correct horizontal as well as vertical position. Then it should have a positive anterior stop that is an anterior vertical stop or an incisal pin should be there. Then it should accept phase 4 transfer record using an anterior reference point. Then it should open and close in hinge movement and also it should allow for protrusive as well as lateral motion. The moving parts should move freely and should be accurately machined and non-moving parts should be of rigid construction and it should be made up of non-corrosive and rigid material that resist wear and tear. So the additional requirements. So first one adjustable horizontal and lateral condyla guide elements. Then a mechanism to accept a third reference point from a phase 4 transfer record. That is third point of reference should be accepted. A terminal hinge position locking device. Removable mounting plates that can be repositioned accurately. An adjustable incisal guide table. And finally, adjustable intercondylar width of the condylar elements. So these are the additional requirements of articulator. Section of the articulator that is classification of articulators. So there are numerous number of classifications of articulators. And I have selected only the important ones. That is mainly four. That is based on the theories of occlusion. Based on type of interocclusal record that is used based on the ability to simulate jaw movements and finally based on adjustability of the articulator. So let us see one by one in detail. So Boucher has classified articulators based on theories of occlusion as well as types of interocclusal records. Three geometric theories of mandibular movements. That is first one is Bonville's equilateral theory. Monson's spherical theory and Hall's conical theory. So articulators were classified based on these theories. First is Bonville's theory of occlusion. So according to Bonville's theory, the teeth move in relation to each other as guided by condylar controls and incisal points. So the teeth are controlled by condylar as well as incisal guidances. And Bonville theory is also known as theory of equilateral triangle and according to this the distance between the condyle is equal to the distance between the condyle and the midpoint of mandibular incisors. So the distance between the condyle is equal to the distance between the condyle and the incisal point that is the midpoint of mandibular incisors and uh, theoretically this value was found to be the uh, 4 inches. So it was an equilateral triangle of 4 inch dimension and Bonville articulators they allow lateral movement and also permit the movement of the mechanism that is joint only in the horizontal plane. So these are Bonville articulators based on Bonville's theory of occlusion. The conical theory articulators which was proposed by R. E. Hall. So according to conical theory, the lower teeth move over the surface of the upper teeth as over the surface of a cone generating an angle of 45 degree with its central axis tipped 45 degree to the occlusal plane. So you can see here this is the cone and the central axis of the cone it is tipped at 45 degree to the occlusal plane. So this is conical theory. An example is Hall's automatic articulator. Finally, the spherical theory of occlusion proposed by G.S. Monson. So, Monson associated Bonville's triangle with his own observation and formulated his spherical theory. And according to this theory, the mandibular teeth move over the maxillary teeth 
and so were the surface of a sphere with a diameter of 8 inches and the center of which is located in the region of glabella and the surface of the sphere passes through the glenoid fossa along the articulating eminences or concentrate with them. So you can see in this picture the mandibular teeth move over the surface of a maxillary teeth as over the surface of a sphere with a diameter of 8 inches and the center is located in the region of glabella and the surface of the sphere passes through the glenoid fossa along the articulating eminences. So uh, according to Monson, this sphere touches the apices of the Bonville triangle. So he mm, developed the articulator that is Monson's maxillomandibular articulator. This was based on spherical theory of occlusion and in which the upper membrane moves anterior posteriorly as well as medio laterally. Now the disadvantages of articulator based on theory of occlusion is that these are based on theoretical concept and there is no provision for variations from this theoretical relationship that can be seen in different persons. Again based on interocclusal record adjustments articulators are classified into two those utilizing the interocclusal records that is made up of base plate wax, POP, zinc oxide eugenol or cold cure acrylic resin and those using the graphic record adjustments. So the graphic record consists of records of extreme border positions of mandibular movements. So these articulators are capable of accurately reproducing the border movements of the mandible and face bow and jaw writing apparatus that is pandograph can be attached in order to transfer these graphic records. And also these instruments have one feature in common that is necessity for correctly locating the hinge axis. So for this we use an instrument that is called as transograph that is for recording the accurate location of the hinge axis in articulator. Next one is the most and widely used classification given in English text which was proposed by International Prestodontic Workshop on Complete Denture Occlusion at the University of Michigan in 1972. So this classification was based on an articulator's function and articulators were classified into four classes. Class 1, Class 2 which was subdivided into A, B and C and Class 3 and Class 4 subdivided into A and B respectively. So in class 1 were the articulators which were capable of accepting a single static registration that is only vertical motion is possible and these articulators are used in cases where a tentative jaw relation is done. So examples of class 1 articulators are slab articulator, hinge joint and barn door hinge joint articulators. Next, the class 2 articulators which permit horizontal and vertical movements but they do not orient the movement of to the TMJ with a face bow. So, these were subdivided as class 2A, B and C. Class 2A consisted of articulators which allowed limited eccentric motion based on average values. So, they do not accept a face bow transfer. Example is mean value articulator or the Gaussian simplex. The class 2 subdivision B articulators which was based on arbitrary theories of motion which we have already discussed. Example is the maxillomandibular instrument by Monson, the Hall articulator etc. Class 2 subdivision C which is based on engraved records from the patient. So example is the house articulator which was designed by house in 1972 and here the casts are mounted arbitrarily and the instrument is adjusted by means of needle house chewing which uses four metal studs or metal styli which are embedded into the maxillary occlusal rim against the lower compound occlusal rim. And here the patient is asked to close on the occlusal rim and make protrusive, retrusive right left lateral movements and here the styli will create a marking on the mandibular occlusal rim which is diamond shaped marking pattern and the posterior most point of this diamond pattern indicates the centric jaw relation. So such articulators come under class 2 subdivision C. Next 
Next comes the class three articulators which permit horizontal and vertical movements and they do accept phaseboard transfer but this facility is limited. So they cannot allow total customization of the condylar pathways. These instruments simulate condylar pathways by using average or mechanical equivalence for the whole or part of the condylar motion. So this is classified into two subdivision class 3A and class 3B. Class 3A accepts static protrusive registration. Class 3B accepts static protrusive registration and some lateral protrusive registration. So the Hanau model H comes in class 3A which was designed by Rudolf Hanau and here the articulator accepts phaseboard transfer. The horizontal condylar inclination is set by means of protrusive interoclusal record. That is it accepts static protrusive registration and the Bennett angle will be calculated with Hanau's equation that is L is equal to H by 8 plus 12 and this articulator is the forerunner of the present day Hanau H2. So we will be discussing Hanau in detail in the coming slides and the examples of class 3B are Panadent Hanau 130-21. The class 4 articulators which accept three dimensional dynamic registrations that is they are capable of accurately reproducing the condylar pathway for each patient and they also allow the orientation of the cars using a phase for transfer and here two subdivisions are there class 4a where the condylar path is determined by engraving registrations produced by the patient and this path cannot be modified example is tmg articulator and class 4b where the condylar paths can be selectively angled and customized by selecting from variety of curvatures or modifications so here they allow angulations and customization of the condylar path example is the stort instrument nathoscope the dina simulator etc next is the new system classification by rehani which was proposed in 1980 by which articulators are classified into three types based on its adjustability that is non-adjustable, semi-adjustable and fully adjustable articulators. The non-adjustable articulators which can open and close a lunar fixed horizontal axis and they have a fixed condyla path along which condyla bowl can be moved in order to simulate lateral or protrusive jaw movements and the incisal guide pins they ride on an inclined plane in a fixed inclination. Non-adjustable articulators which are the minimum basic requirement for a prosthodontic work. So the features are it has adjustable condylar and incisal guides and is also capable of accepting phase bow record and the condylar guides are programmed from protrusive record and lateral records are obtained from the patient and they have adjustable horizontal condylar path, lateral condylar path adjustable incisal guide tables and adjustable intercondylar distances and the degree and ease of these adjustments differ. So basically semi-adjustable articulators are classified into two types that is archon as well as non-archon. So a semi-adjustable articulators actually allows adjustment to replicate the average mandibular movements and examples are Hano series, dentatus, etc. Coming to Archon articulators. So it was Bergstrom who coined the term Archon from two words that is articulators and condyle. So what is the difference between Archon and non-Archon articulator? So as you can see here in Archon the condylar element is in the lower part of the articulator. So this is the condylar element which is in the lower part of the articulator and the condylar guidance is in the upper part. Whereas in non-archon, the condylar element, you can see it is in the upper section of the articulator and condylar guidance is in the lower segment. So just remember anyone, if you can remember, just remember that condylar element. Condylar element is in the lower part in archon articulators and condylar element is in the upper part of the non-archon articulator. So the advantages of archon articulator are better visualization and understanding of mandibular movements. So here the condylar guidance is the mechanical analog of glenoid fossa and the condyles move in a relationship to their condylar housing which is in a similar way 
like that of the condyle moving relationship in the glenoid fossa in the skull so archon articulator resembles the human tmj and this makes the visualization and understanding of the condyla movements easier and also the phase wall transfer occlusal plane and relationship of the opposing cast are also preserved when articulator is open and closed because it is the mechanical analog of the glenoid fossa so the non archon articulators which have got the condylar elements attached to the upper membrane the condylar elements of the condylar sphere that is attached to the upper membrane and the condylar guidance or condylar slot that is attached to the lower member so here it is the reverse of the temporomandibular joint and examples of non archon articulators are hanoex series dentatus and geisel whereas examples of archon articulators were uh, hano university series and also uh, the with mix articulators which of the articulator is superior archon or non archon so it was heinz or beck et al in 1959 who evaluated the archon concept of articulation and concluded that there is no definite superiority in the clinical evaluation of a complete denture that is constructed on archon over the non archon instrument Lawrence O. Weinberg concluded that archon and condylar instruments produced the same motion, and the motion resulted from the action of a condylar bone on an inclined plane. And reversing their relationship did not change the motion. So the basic motion is the same. That is, action of a condylar bone on an inclined plane is not changing. We are just changing their relationship. So basically archon or non archon both produces the same motion coming to the fully adjustable articulators which uh, allows replication of three dimensional movements of the recorded mandibular motion so these articulators have numerous adjustable readings which can be customized for each patient and they do not have a condyla guidance instead they have receptacles in which the acrylic dove can be condored to form a customized condylar and incisal guidance so about the customized anterior guidance we have discussed in our full mouth rehabilitation session so such customization can be done in fully adjustable articulators and these articulators are not commonly used because of their complexity and examples are star instrument nathoscope simulator etc now there is fully adjustable nathological articulator which allows replication of three dimensional movement plus timing of the recorded mandibular motion so example of such articulators are cavo protar dinar etc next we are going to discuss the differences between semi adjustable and fully adjustable articulators and this you can expect as a short note in your university exam and this topic will be continuing in our next session so thank you all for watching my video please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful and if you are new to this channel prosto hub please please do subscribe and support me if you have any queries topic suggestions or feedbacks you can comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so it's a bye from prosto hub until our next session thank you